Hello, Cem Tezcan here. I'm recording this video to show you a workaround to make it work, uh, make the CRT TV timestamps work on Electric Dreams environment. The main problem that the, actually the material pack works great with the uh, pack, but Electric Dreams on the Electric Dreams environment, the timestamp doesn't show on the post process material or the standard CRT TV material because Electric Dreams uses forward rendering system uh, which has a tiny problem to be fixed with the scene capture element that I'm using to capture the timestamp text and, pu uh, and uh, just um, project it to the screen. So let's create a project first. I will define a folder CRT workaround like this. This will take a while. So let's wait for it. Actually, I will uh, return back recording after the project is created for not, uh, for preventing to make you waiting so see you after the project is created so it's verifying the created project let's wait a little bit while a little bit more All right, so the project is created right here. I'm going to add the CRT TV to this to this project. Waiting for the bar to fill. It's done and I'm double clicking to the newly created project. It takes a little bit more, so we are nearly done loading the project. All right, so here you will see the content of the Electric Dreams project, and this is the um, main level map that shows some information. So under the content, there is the CRT VCR material and this is the sample map of the of the pack. So let's load it first and see if timestamp works or not because it won't work because of the settings of this project which uses the forward rendering. You see that the rest of the material works fine and if I enter the zone of the post process area we got the effect as well, but there is no timestamp on the screen. You will see that there should be a timestamp on this area as well, which is recorded or captured by this camera right here and the numbers that uh, changes. So to fix this problem, we need to do uh, several touches to the capture device. So first we need to ungroup the this content. So I'm right clicking. If you select one of them, you will be selecting all of them since they are grouped. So I am ungrouping these and you will see that this capture camera, capture cameras, capture source has been set to base color in RGB. 
but there is a note here that informs about deferred render only, which this project of Electric Dreams doesn't use deferred render. It uses forward render, I suppose. So we need to change it to final color LDR in RGB. So this way it will capture the system, but not only the base color, all it will capture all the shading. Let me show you, uh, sorry, switch to the CRT VCR material and under the materials, you will see that timestamp capture has been rendered this way, but there are also some shading uh, is captured as well. So if I move back to the post process area, you will see that there it's not a clean um, projection of the numbers. So to fix that, we need to just select the capture device here and search for flag. You will see that these are the flags that are captured by the system. We need to deselect some of them, actually most of them. So I'm deselecting post process. You will see that the uh, it has been much more clean right now. I'm deselecting lighting and game. I'm leaving the mesh here and deselecting rest of the content. So this way it will only capture the colors of the plane that it's directed to. I will be leaving the static meshes right here, but unticking rest of them. So this solves the main problem of the uh, projects that uses, that doesn't use deferred render. So next I will select all of the content under the timestamp back and I will group them again. Now we, we are going to use this setup on the Electric Dreams environment's own levels. So by clicking one of them, it select all of them, you know, and also I'm clicking with shift to this post process volume and I will press Ctrl and C to copy them. So let's switch to the Electric Dreams uh, own level. This is the close range version, which is lightweight. Uh, so it will be easier for us to navigate on this one because the other one has a massive area, which is hard to navigate on my system. So we are here like this. And by selecting top of the outliner, I'm pressing Ctrl and V and I pasted the projection system, timestamp system, like this. And also I pasted the post-process volume like this. So with this post-process volume, if I enter to this area, you will see that the timestamp is available right now. So what I'm going to do, set this post-process as infinite infinite extent so this way it just generates the effect on the whole area and I can go back to the forest so let's double click on one of the meshes all right so this is the environment of the electric dreams created right here and this is the post process that we are using like this. So we can adjust the parameters of this post process volume or create our own post process material instance as well. So I'm searching for the material and under this post process volume and you will see that this is the applied post process volume material to that volume. So if I change it, you will see that we will get different results. The unsaturated one, 
Or we can use the saturated one. And let's change some of the parameters. I will increase the scanline count to 150, which looks better. And also I will adjust some of the horizontal signal distortion. Let me see the parameter right here. Yeah. I will increase the frequency. Let's increase the strength first. Yes, this is the desired frequency of the... If I set it to a lower value, you will see that it will shake as a whole screen. If I increase it, it will be generating tiny pixel shaking and we can after adjusting the frequency, I can decrease the strength to make it tinily distorted. So I am going to increase the screen hop interval to decrease the hops. Great, so one more adjustment about the noise scale. It can be defined as negative values. Of the, uh, this is the tracking noise. Let me increase the density to show you better. You see, and if I set it to negative two, you will see that it will be much more tinier. I will fix this, uh, fix the range of this parameter value. So you won't be needing to enter it manually. You can use the slider that way. And you can decrease and increase the level of this noise. Which is nice. And also we can adjust the um, timestamp opacity after fixing it for this project. You'll see that if I set it to negative values, it will be go black. If I set it to zero, it will disappear. And from zero to one, you will you can be able to you will be able to set uh, set the opacity of the text. Also, I can decrease the reflection. That barrel intensity is used for creating a bumpy feel on the screen. Looks nice. So we can navigate here. And also let's play the project to see the FX work normally. It works great and you see that maybe we can decrease the white noise. I don't like the overall white noise level. So this is here. Let's set it to zero. Yes. I'm going to full screen and press Alt and P to run the project. And it looks nice. So the CRT filter works great with the realistic environment like this. It's really cool. Like 80s. <laughs> so this sums up the timestamp um, workaround for the projects that doesn't use deferred rendering. Uh, so most of the people using um, 
VR applications, which uses mostly uh, forward rendering or forward shading. So this way, it will help you to define the timestamp or enable the timestamp back on your projects. I hope it will be useful. So thanks for watching.